Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, not only does Crow have lead in his pencil, it's in his deer too. We have news, we have hunting YouTube, we have Hello Charlie. First, I'm off out after rabbits and hoping it's all going to go a bit Star Wars. We all know and love the South Somerset ferreters. But it is May. They won't start ferreting until October and the ferrets need to be fed. That's why I'm out with Jaff shooting rabbits. Well, that's mainly why. I'm on a little small holding that the lady owns. Um, she's given me a call earlier to come and shoot a few rabbits because she's got a few here. But we've had we've shot one at the moment. Um, now we're getting hampered by the wind and the rain. But... These, these are excuses. Yeah. Everyone's got an excuse, Charlie. <laughs> You know? Now, I've come to show off two bits of kit, which I'm extremely keen on. Yeah. You might think they're laughable because you, you do this properly. I just do it for fun. The first is my bipod. Okay. Now, what's clever about this is it just magnetically goes on there. And it's a solid bipod. It's carbon fibre, so it's light as anything. Go into a pocket. Yeah. Impressed? Very impressed, yeah, impressed. yeah. Impressed. Yeah, very impressed. impressed. <laughs> Another thing I want to show you. Which I'm extremely proud of is my laser. <laughs> the bullet goes with the dotties. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, no, do you think it is brilliant? Um, it's yeah, why not? Yeah, it's got drawbacks. Yeah. If you go bang and you point your gun up in the air, you're gonna you might laser a passing aeroplane, which will put you in prison. Yeah, right? definitely. Yeah, That's I mean, bad thing. yeah, I mean, if if. Give it a go, you know, see what happens. See what happens. Yeah, why not? Well, yeah. Well. yeah. Now, using a laser atop a rifle should be like this. Three of them coming in, 20 degrees. But it's actually like this. Meanwhile, Jaff is shooting straight. And even goes for the double. Red 2. Well, we're using that heavier grain 2 2 bullet. So. With darkness falling and four rabbits in the bag, Jaff has got an appointment with a fox he's keen to keep. Um, we're going to hop off to another farm now, and some farmers got some just let some geese out to stay. So hopefully, we'll, uh, well, for his sake, we'll get a fox and we'll move on to the next one, you know. Now, I did give the, uh, the laser another outing on the rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can see you, you, you were impressed with those, you're less impressed by the laser. Well, it's, it's a new thing, you know, until it's tried and tested, who really knows? We find one, but it's gone too quickly to film. Oh, he's gone, mate. As soon as he saw the light, he was gone. You can also use the laser like a lamp, and it holds at zero when you do that. When we come across rabbits, Jaff lets me have another go. Still no joy. The laser thing is not as easy in practice as it is in theory. Surely the bullet goes where the green dot is. All I have to do is lay off the whiskey for a few nights and maintain a steady hand. The problem is holdover. On a paper target you can see how much holdover you need. Actually with this shot I need to aim a little bit more to the left. With a scope the reticle shows you how much holdover, but with a laser on a live rabbit it's difficult to judge without the help of Pythagoras and the angle A. Where is the angle A? There it is. That's about as far as I got with maths at school. So even if you're lucky enough to be in a place like this, there's too many of them. It's not going to be easy until you get within 20 yards of them. I find a spot where they are within 20 yards of a clump of trees. The following morning, I get to prove to the world that lasers are the future. Ha! Yee-ha! Uh. That bipod comes from javelinbipod.com and I get my lasers from laserware.co.uk. Good for Imperial stormtroopers and rabbits. Thank you, Jaff, for a terrific night out. You South Somerset ferreters certainly know how to give me a good time. Now, from a hard-nosed Jaff to a soft-centred Jaffa cake, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump.
This is Field Sports Channel News. The SNP may vote against a repeal of the ban on hunting with dogs in England and Wales, even though it promised it wouldn't. The Scottish nationalists said they would abstain because the law only applies to England and Wales. Pressed on the possible repeal, Nicola Sturgeon wrote on Twitter, The SNP has not yet taken a decision on this. We certainly don't agree with repealing ban. Grey squirrels are in trouble again after scientists found that they give people Lyme disease. The pest rodent is already in conservationists' bad books for endangering its red squirrel cousin and damaging woodland by stripping bark from trees. Now a scientific study by the University of Glasgow reveals the ticks on the pest rodents host the Borrelia bacteria which causes Lyme disease. Around 4% of the ticks in the UK are believed to carry Lyme disease which is first identified in Old Lyme, Connecticut in the US in 1975. Zambia is to lift its ban on hunting lions and leopards. The tourism minister says rules imposed in 2013 against hunting big cats now seriously affects wildlife resources and the livelihoods of local people. Jean Capata, the tourism and arts minister, said profits from hunting the big cats could benefit wildlife conservation as well as the livelihoods of the rural communities. Leopard hunting will resume this year, the 2015-2016 season. Lion hunting will resume next year. Both will have low quotas. Wildfowler Matthew Kirk of MPK Custom Calls has won an industry award. We filmed with Matt and his friend Nick Horton last year, out on the mud and in his workshop. He won the Innovation of the Year category at the awards organised by Time Inc, publisher of magazines including Shooting Times and The Field. He said a special thank you to Field Sports Britain for helping him with his business. And finally, an American state has had to ban sailors and rowers from a popular boating lake because of an angry moose. The way to spot an angry moose is from its pinned back or flattened ears with fur raised around the neck and back. Other signs are a lowered head, stomping feet and teeth clicking or licking of lips. They add, in the case of a moose charging, people are encouraged to run and not stand their ground. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Talking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you for that, David. Let's hear what you lot have been up to. It is Hello Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Tex Grabner here with Tex Grabner Outdoors. Firing the first shot through. My 458 lot CZ Safari Magnum. Hello, Charlie. It's Steve from Kent on one of my pigeon shoots. Um, fantastic thing happened today. Um, I've been shooting on a field over in Essex, and uh, I've had about 25 birds so far. Um, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw a fox coming across the field, to, and uh, he decided to help himself to one of my decoys. Um, which unfortunately led to him getting uh, lead poisoning very, very quickly. Um, 32 grams of number five, sorted him out about 30 yards, but uh, yeah, that's never happened to me before, so that was fantastic. Anyway, mate, keep up the good work. Bye. That's it. Please send me your Hello Charlies via Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox, or email charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Thank you for those. Now, will Andy Crow break his duck or deer? in this case and have a successful stalk on camera. Incredibly, we have never filmed Andy Oi. shooting a deer. We've filmed Dom shooting a deer on his land, but that's as close as it's got. However, these shots prove that he does indeed shoot deer. Delicious burger, crow, venison burgers. But what's this? A 2-2 air pellet in the haunch of the roebuck. Not something you want to see. In, uh back haunch of one of them, I found uh, two, two, two pellets. It had gone through the skin, and then there's the membrane between the skin and the actual meat, and they were sideways on both of them. But they've been in there, oh, they've been there a long time. It was no problem to the deer. Probably it was just like a fly biting on the arse, I suspect, but just annoying that people were shooting them with uh, air rifles. But bit of the norm now, they, they're shooting them with 2-2 uh, lives off the road and everything, so it's worth a bit, so they just shoot them with anything anyway, so I suppose if it's there and they, whatever gun they got, they're going to shoot it. 
Crow is very pleased with the new set of Primos two-point gun rest trigger sticks. He's been after some for ages, but we all know that the chances of using them are pretty slim. Finally been sent a pair to try it, or set to try it. Um, they look the dogs, dogs danglish, but um, we should find out tonight. They work on a trigger, trigger mechanism. Up the top here, pull on here, it goes down. Put pressure that way, it'll lock that side. You put pressure on the back, it'll lock that way. It's got the rifle rest on the top. We'll see how that goes later on. Just hope we bump into something tonight. And uh, hopefully third time lucky with you here, David. Uh, whenever you're about stalking me, I don't know whether it's the BO or whether it's a perfume you wear, but they, we don't seem to have a lot of luck when you're with me. I know you don't had the same trouble, but um, I shoot loads of deer a year and I never seem to shoot them when you're about. You go with Roy, you get up early to go with Roy, but you just don't get up early to come with me. So off we go. It's a nice evening with a break in what has been some pretty wet weather. It feels right and Les has seen plenty of row around his feeders which are kept topped up during the off season. To me it seems wrong. You feed your pheasants up to the 1st of February. Thank you very much, end of. But like I say, Les looks after his birds well. He's, uh, Feeders are still full, that's what the deer are coming to a bit at the moment. Until the, the wheat's in here, then they start feeding on that. So, and that's when Les is, he'll be all right then, because they, they tend to go out and eat the natural. But there's one here, there's one there. There's a couple more down the bottom, so we're just working our way around. Just in one rush down through the wood down there. But no way can we get a shot at it, but it's a nice evening anyway to be out. It's good to have you out with me again, David, as well. Come on. We spot deer, but nothing stands. However, there are some less mobile, wild food kicking about these parts. Big, edible snails. It must be to do with the chalk. Um, when I used to work here, there's hundreds of them up here. They're just mainly this side of the farm. But yeah, you can eat them. I have eaten them. Feed them on lettuce for a few days. Cleans them through. And I need them. Roast them? Nope. Never roast a snail in my life. He's never lived. We are not going at a snail's pace. We have ground to cover to reach the hot spots. Edging down the field margin, we spot a row, but it's a doe. We stand and watch, hoping that her boyfriend might break cover, but he is shy. Another pheasant feeder just down through the wood. Um, I think that's where she's heading. Wood of the buck. He might be just round the corner. Uh, Give it a minute here, if nothing happens, we we'll slowly creep down, give her a bit of time to walk down through the wood. That's not the start, I don't want to start her really, so give her a bit of time to creep down through. Then we go down wide and just have a quick look down through, see if there's anything else down in there. On again, and Les takes us on a shortcut up and around the wood, leading us here, and Crow is losing his marbles. I'm new to this stalking game. We've been stalking these all evening, we've been following their tracks. And, uh, we finally come around the corner and Les has informed me that they are they're cows. Again, we have lucked out. No deer for Crow Man. It could be the strength of David's blue stratos or Crow's natural musk, but at least there's plenty of burgers back at the ranch without a side order of lead pellet. Thank you, Andy. Better luck next time. Now, here are some people who are probably not shadowed by a perfumed cameraman. It's the best of hunting and shooting on YouTube. It is hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Max Hunt is back with a multi-language look at a rifle, the new Zawa 404. This one is in English. Zawa nut Max takes it apart in a thorough review at a massive gun shop and shooting complex in Denmark. More Scandinavians, Christopher Clausen is in the Kalahari in Botswana after Plains Game. This is a promo for a film he's selling on ClausenTV.com. Spanish hunting channel Revax Films brings out one of its great quality videos. This one is about a Spanish-driven hunt on Monteria. Off to the USA, where Tim's Solo hunter Burnett is hunting the rut for big white-tailed bucks in Oklahoma. After taking one buck with his bow, he heads out for the opening day of the rifle season. The backyard meat man is varmint hunting for sage rats, a kind of ground squirrel, and trout fishing with his boys. He calls it a great way to get the boys out shooting safely. Big Game Hunting New Zealand magazine has a YouTube channel, and in this film they are showcasing red stag and boar hunting in Otago. It is a promo for a video that is out with issue 6 of the BGHNZ magazine. Also from New Zealand, Josh's hunting movie is a few short clips from past hunting trips 
vibes that Josh has thrown together. Brings back some great memories and makes me want to get out in the hills again, he says. And finally, some dogs are born to hunt and one of them is old dog Jim, the subject of this film. Now in his tenth year, Jim has caught hundreds of pigs. After a preamble that's mainly about Jim's bathroom habits, this film covers some of his red letter days. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Please follow us on Facebook or watch us or like us or poke us on Twitter, whatever you like to do. Or go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, pop your email address into our constant contact box and we'll constantly contact you about our programmes. This one's Field Sports Britain at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye.